What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Ungraduated Media, your channel, your show for all things physical media, movies, books, and music that we can grow, learn, and be enlightened through the perspective of the films. Yes, we talk about the artwork. Yes, we get into the packaging. But more than that, we talk about what we can learn and gain from these movies and, of course, vinyl music and books as well, too. So if you like that type of stuff, do subscribe and do comment. I want to be involved with you all, get what your thoughts are behind this and how we continue to engage. It really helps to show out, and I would really appreciate that if you did subscribe and like and comment. Okay, diving right into it. This is the second installment of Peter Zolkin's Apocalypse Tetralogy from Vinegar Syndrome. We are going to be talking about War of the Worlds, The Next Century. That's the second installment. If you missed Golem and want to go back and check that out, I will link that up there, that corner, for all of you to go back and check out. You don't have to watch these in any kind of an order. I just did more of an unboxing and more of an overview in that first uh, review of Golem, so I'm not going to do that here. If you want to see more about the packaging and the inserts, the book, of course, what all the four movies are, Go ahead back and check that one out. War of the Worlds, the next century. So let's give you an overall view here of this film. So we have basically a broadcaster in this film. He is typical newscaster, if you will, that gets the eyes and ears of all the attention of the town, of the community. Kind of just envision any mainstream media network, your favorite TV broadcaster today. This is based in the 80s. Let me give some of the details of the movie here first. So here we have uh, 81, 1981. This film was made uh, 97 minutes in 1851 ratio. This is in Polish with English subtitles. All these films from Peter Zolkin's Apocalypse Tetralogy and Vinegar Syndrome are going to all have English subtitles, so you got to be okay with that, but I implore upon you, get used to it. It's not that bad. I used to hate them too. Be honest. Of course, I am being honest with you. Didn't like subtitles, but now as I've gotten into different genres and true cinema and film, not being snobby, it's just that you miss out on content if you don't want to watch subtitles because, of course, not every movie is going to be made in English. So this thing is not that long, but um, getting back to the topic here, we have this newscaster, this broadcaster, right, that is having to tell people about the Martians. They've landed. This is actually foretelling the year 1999. Kind of comical, actually. But you have Iron Edom, played by Roman Wilhelmi, that is having to convey that the Martians are safe. They come in peace. There is no reason to be concerned. As this film goes on, he begins to see the truth for what it really is. And right off the bat, as this movie begins, he is disturbed because his senior executives hand him a new script. And he's asking, why are you changing the script? Why am I not able to say what I intended to say tonight? And they just basically say, here's your new lines. You will communicate this. From that point, he has his apartment ransacked the next morning. His wife is kidnapped and taken away from him. He is tagged like a cow on the ear with a number that represents his friendship number with the Martians and that he will basically comply. And if not, well, then things aren't going to work out so well for him. So he is facing this uphill battle of moral dilemma. Does he begin to actually communicate with the people what he is experiencing? Or does he have to continue along this charade in order to hopefully be back with his wife again? So they use his wife as leverage. Later on in the movie, without any spoilers and not giving it away, uh, his wife does get to see him again. But you'll have to watch for yourself in what actually takes place. This is a great movie. I'm telling you right now, I was so surprised by this film being that it's from 1981, and again, the film quality looks fantastic. I'll be showing some images from my own 4K iPhone Pro camera, as well as with the 4K native Sony projector. 
on my theater screen of Cinegrade 3D material. So this is a great movie. It looks fantastic. Again, as I said with Golem, all these transfers from Vinegar Syndrome just are amazing. The imagery is popping. You see the neons. You can see all the colors. Just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful transfer. And again, we only have this in mono, so it's not going to be anything fantastic from a audio standpoint. But again, if you can get past the subtitles, which I implore you to do, I think you'll really enjoy this film. So getting kind of back into the content, I'm going to play a few clips for you that are just so eye-opening. He's having to read these lines. I'll show you one right now. This is 29 grudnia. Wyjątkowy dzień. Dzień, w którym nie obchodzimy żadnej rocznicy. Nie umarł dziś nikt, o kim musiałbym wam mówić. Ale może się ktoś taki urodził. Jeżeli coś wiecie na ten temat, ja Iron idem. Czekam na wasze telefony. Pamiętaj. Żona cię zdradzi, kochanka porzuci, przyjaciel opuści, ale ja, czyli telewizja, nigdy. You just gotta love that. Actually, you can't love it. I mean, your wife's gonna leave you, your lover will betray you, your friends aren't gonna be with you anymore, but the television you will always be able to trust. It goes and hearkens to this George Orwell, H.G. Wells perspective. I think in the beginning of this movie, actually, Peter Zolkin himself pays tribute to both Orwell and H.G. Wells. So it's known that they are going in this direction with the film. And that clip I just shared with you is one that was more early on, whenever we have Iron Edom, who is still very much trying to play the part. Now check out this next clip. Urząd sanitarny przypomina zapominalskim, że dziś upływa termin obowiązkowego oznaczania i rejestracji grupy krwi. Karty tożsamości bez wpisanego wyniku są nieważne, co już samo w sobie powinno stanowić dla was bodziec do uczestnictwa w tej pożytecznej akcji. Ostrzega się, że osoby uchylające się działają wbrew swemu interesowi i ogólnemu dobru. So as the film progresses and Iron Edom decides to take on this perspective and see really what he can do to try to open people's eyes and shake the truth into them, he faces an uphill battle. He gets kicked out of his apartment. The more that he pushes back against the mainstream controllers, the more that they adversely affect him. He makes several attempts to contact his wife. They send in some arranged, controlled conversation from what appears to be a a lawyer who's trying to get iron to sign the paperwork for um the uh the alimony for his wife his account is frozen and that's made known to him this is whenever he grabs a fork and sticks it right in the neck of this individual and has quite the uh exchange of enlightening perspective back and forth check this out Ludzie, proszę pana, tak trzeba. Ludzie są bezwolni, jesteś tacy służliwi, wierni. Jak ja, chcą być gwałceni. Robią tylko to, co się nie proszę pana każe. Jak ja. Piętnaście lat. This is really a reference to people want to be led, right? They want to be told what to do. And while you may argue against that, a lot of the psychological studies show this, that people respond to authority. And in this scene, as Iron Edom has had enough and holds the fork to the throat of this attorney, supposed attorney, and he conveys that he is just a messenger and he begins to break down, he says people... They want to be like this. They want to be controlled. They want to be manipulated. And uh, that's a sad truth in some cases because it's not so much that they want to. It's that they're afraid to step out of the norm, right? We are a society 
that very much wants to stay within its comfort zone. Most people don't want to break out of that. They don't want to go against the grain. So they are manipulated, they are forced, they are pressed against, they are pushed down. And that's what happens in a lot of these, you know, higher authoritarian, totalitarian styles of governments that is being portrayed here in this film. And then there is one more clip here where Iron Edom reaches his lowest point. He is kicked out of his apartment, has to stay in this commune style of, uh, I guess, shelter, for lack of better terms, where he's cared for. He's told to get out of bed, exercise, and give blood. He refuses. But before all of that, one of the individuals that came into contact earlier with him in this film recognizes that it's... It's indeed Iron Edom himself. Now he has his wig off in most of this film when he is on TV. It's another backstory within the story. He cannot be himself outside of the TV studio, so he has to wear a wig and portray himself as a different individual whenever he is live on the air. So anyways, he gets recognized, and there is this back-and-forth conveyance of hatred, of this individual telling Iron Edom how much he despises him and then Iron breaking down and basically admitting to this individual the truth that really is. Check this one out. This is where Iron Edom has finally had enough. He is fully awake. He has decided he is going to fight back. He says at the end of that clip, he has only poisoned one mind today, and that is that of his own, because his entire world is shattered. He is basically not given up, but has made up his mind that he will fight tooth and nail to go against everything that this establishment is pushing down upon society. Now, that's where I leave it, because no spoilers here. You got to watch the end of this movie. He is put on trial. They try to degrade him. They try to change the things that he says to look a certain way. Again, ask yourself how much this actually occurs in real life, even in today's society. How much can we truly believe that is put in front of us from both sides of the aisle? Uh, I'll just put that out there right now. I have lived as a Republican. I have lived as a Democrat. And now I'll see myself more or less, not even as a libertarian. I just identify as no side of the aisle. I stand for humanity and want to find a way for all of humanity to rise above consciously and awaken to the truest potential that we have here and not succumb to the whimsical demands and puppeteering that is often put forth right in front of us. But watch this to the end it really has a very unique ending and uh, meaning behind it. So completely and thoroughly enjoyed this film. Tell me in the comments what you think about this. Is this something that you can relate with? Again, 40-ish years ago, this film was put out there by a great director who I am just beginning to now admire in Peter Zolskin. <laughs> There it is. Pitor Zolkin. Zolkins. Anyways, I'm loving his work. There's two more of these films to go. I can tell you that uh, the next one up is Ob Oba. That will be the next review in this four part series. And it'll be concluded with Gaga. So Ob Oba is next. Gaga follows after. Now, overall enjoyment of this film absolutely blew my mind. I was completely into the transfer. The visuals looked amazing, as I said earlier. Fantastic looking neon and colors for a 40-year-old movie. This Blu-ray transfer is phenomenal. I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. 
Audio again is basic. It's a mono track, uh, nothing that needs to be a whole lot more of. So three out of five right there. This is an enlightening movie, okay? If you never saw yourself really taking a look and stepping back through the looking glass, pun intended, with the television, right? Then it's enlightening. Many of you watching this might say, yeah, duh, we know this. But not everybody did. The creators of the television and the programs that we watch on it. Just think about the etymology there. Think about the words of what we just said there. Television and programs. Man, I don't know. Was it really intended to be that? Or did just, you know, the psychologists of the world <laughs> get paid with all these marketing agencies and media agencies to say, how do we control, manipulate, and keep society in whatever view that they want society in? So I completely enjoy this type of stuff. If it's not your bag, hey, I get it. But uh, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please do give it a like. Subscribe if you have not yet and comment below. Again, let's engage in the conversation. I want to keep these things engaged. And it really does help the channel out as well, too. And uh, I, I would be forever grateful, of course, for those likes and that continued engagement here with comments. So until the next one coming up, ob -O ba continue to find your way through your why, all the while remembering life is not in our hands, my friends. It all begins up here in our heads with that belief system and that thought system. So do take care for now. Talk to you all again soon.